Welcome back, everybody. Uh, this is uh, an Armory Chat. We haven't done one of these in a, quite a while. This is going to be Armory Chat 41, and it's going to be a mail call Armory Chat. I've been sitting on some mail for a while, and we were supposed to be out on the range today with bulldozers, but it's raining again, so you know, most of the staff has gone home. It's 3.30. I've obviously been in here since uh, about 6.30, so wanted to uh, open up some stuff it's uh, for some projects and one interesting thing that Freeze and I had found a few months ago and it's kind of been a running joke but I really haven't had a chance to talk about it because we haven't opened it yet so all right let's do the first thing here um, this is from team let's see here T not from T91 tactical in uh, Sugarland Texas this is uh, probably, we're gonna open this. Uh, probably some more parts for the T91 build, which we have not been really working on because we've been too busy working on the thousand yard range. All right, so what do we have here? <clears throat> All right, lower parts kit, an anti-tilt buffer. Oh, oh some earplugs. Nothing, you know, never hurts to have some extra ones of those around. So anti-tilt buffer for the, uh, oh, good thing that's closed. Anti-tilt buffer for the, uh, for the uh, T91 project. Uh, T91 Anti-Tilt Buffer H2, for those of you that are interested. And a complete, what you would call an LPK, lower parts kit. So this has got, you know, the selector, hammer, um, all the pins, and uh, mag release, trig, oh, is that trig, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's got a trigger in it too. So we gotta assemble all that stuff. So that's all for the, uh, T91 uh, project. As I recall, that was a special order, um, something that we just needed the parts kit, but we didn't, there was something else we didn't need, so they kind of created a special one just for us. And, you know, thank you, T91. If you're interested in doing a parts kit thing, they're the people definitely to call. Oh, okay, I know what this is. This was kind of sent as a gag, as a gag gift. But um, kind of not. We've been uh, doing a lot of uh, cutting out on the farm, cutting in not just uh, rifle ranges and pistol ranges. We've been also doing trails for UTVs and ATVs. And uh, someone uh, decided to send us a first aid kit, uh, which is not a bad idea because uh, according to Freeze out there, the only local hospital uh, that's in the region is where you go to die, and that is an actual quote. So thank you very much. Um, this is from a, I'll say this is from John. I'm not gonna say, say John's last name. I don't know if, uh, if I told John we were gonna do this on film, so I don't know if John's really giving me permission to mention his name. He's a regular on a lot of our social media. And he has sent over, oh yeah, actually kind of forgotten about this. A bunch of AK, AK magazines. They are, I believe they're, if I recall, they're 74 mags. So 30 rounds, heavy duty spring and antidote follower lifetime guarantee from Tapco. These are uh, a molded magazine. I've never actually never, I've never even handled a magazine from these people before. I think his, I, I, his question, I think he, he did have a use for these and um, he wanted to see if maybe we could modify them to work in the uh, Valmet, Valmet rifle, the um, 70, the 5.56 AK from Finland that we have. And um, Sure, why not? We'll give it a shot. We can dremel them out. These are 545 mags, but yeah, what the hell. Thank you, John. Very nice of you. Um, if anything else, you know, nothing else, maybe I need to buy a 545 AK now. So, I mean, of all the AKs, 
the actual Tom Block AKs. I, I know this isn't popular in the U.S., but uh, I think the 545 is better than the uh, 762. Um, I know a lot of the kids don't understand that, but it is. So now here's the last one. This is uh, this is a, a, a unique item. So let me tell the story. During the Civil War, during the Battle of Gettysburg, if you watch always, you know, the highlight or the apex of all the, all the renditions of the Battle of Gettysburg, uh, there's Pickett's Charge, where, you know, some people call it the, what, the high water of the South, or basically, long story short, a bunch of Southerners decided they were going to advance on a very fortified uh, Northern Army position, and they, most of them, got greased. And um, one of the generals, a number of uh, officers and flag officers that were killed and died that day, uh, one of them was named General Garnett. And if you ever watch those movies, General Garnett is normally de depicted in one of two ways. He's either depicted as a guy who, who was infirm and uh, uh, couldn't walk, so he rode his horse and went into battle and died, or he's depicted as a guy who was accused of cowardice by General Jackson uh, for retreating without asking for permission to retreat at a previous battle, was arrested for it. Um, and so he decides to hop on his horse and ride in a battle and show everybody that he's not a coward and, you know, F you and the horse you rode in on. He literally rode a horse you know, he's up above everybody else. And if you look at the history books, there's been some question as to what the last moments of his life were like, because, you know, it's a battle and there's smoke and it's black powder. Some people say that he actually took a, a canister grape shot dead on at almost point blank range. And so he got turned into a grease spot. Well, But his sword, for a while, had disappeared. And it became a mystery, and supposedly it had been found in a pawn shop by a fellow veteran in Baltimore. Um, and I guess was subsequently returned to maybe descendant, his descendants. So, you know, the, the, in the, if you, if you are in the military collectible community or the Milser community or the historical collectible community, uh, you'll very, or even if you watch that show Pawn Stars, if you, if you, um, if you see the conversation ever turn into discussing whether an item was used by the North or used by the South, a lot of times the stuff used by the South more often than not, it'll be faked because it's, it's you know, it's a lot rarer. A lot of it was destroyed. Um, a lot of it wasn't really marked necessarily as belonging to the South, so it's hard to document provenance. So the identifiable collectible items are smaller, so the value goes up, and that also causes more people to, you know, fake the items. That's like anything. That's why there's a bunch of fake German stuff out there. So anyway, um, Long story really short, this is getting way too long. Uh, it was a kind of a running joke, like where is General Garnett's sword? After the Battle of Gettysburg, he got turned into a grease spot and his sword had disappeared. And the theory was, you know, was it destroyed or obliterated? Uh, was it picked up by somebody who just picked up a sword and it's sitting over somebody's mantle and they don't realize it's General Garnett's sword or was it buried with him or is it, you know, sitting in whatever. So whenever you run across a random Civil War 
unverifiable sword. The joke around here has always been, that's General Garnett's sword. Obviously, we understand it's been recovered, but that's the joke. So I'm telling you all that to show you this. Hang on. So as you could see, somebody took a real sword a long time ago, if you uh, look at the, uh, the, uh, the electric in the lamp, and turned it into a lamp. Um, that's not something we would ever do, and that's not something that we would ever condone doing, but if it's already been done, well, one of the things I always get shit for is the lamp on the cleaning desk was actually donated by one of the uh, one of the uh, the girls over here on staff uh, came out of uh, their residence and I think they were throwing it away or whatever it was and so you know eh, we need a lamp we could use a lamp over in the uh, you know over in the uh, in the armory so they brought it over and uh, it's been here and some of you may have seen it in some of the uh, armory chats if it's you know we're by, over by my desk you can you can see it um, and so it never really goes with anything. And so when uh, Freeze and I saw this, we decided this would be something fun for us to put in the armory on the cleaning desk. And um, so now we have, uh, our official position is we have discovered General Garnett's real sword. The other sword is fake and uh, it's here in the armory. So anyway, remember it's all about shooting guns and having fun. Everybody have a good day. Good news, General Garnett's sword does work. Now if I can just figure out how to keep it on without burning the armory down. <laughs>